Welcome everyone to another episode of the Lunch Table Podcast. In this episode, we're going to review Avatar, The Way of Water. We haven't been back for a minute, I know. Sorry guys about that, we're really busy. But we're gonna hit you with this awesome review. We have a lot of thoughts on it and it's been a long time coming. So stick with us. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe and check out other playlists as well. But Dylan, I think the air is pretty clear. So gas is clear, dude, mask off. I see you, Akra. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, welcome everybody. Well, firstly, uh, happy holidays to everybody. I hope everybody's having a great holiday season. Um, yeah, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the second uh, Avatar. I thought it was great. And I'm glad that, you know, James Cameron actually took the time to let the technology develop a little bit for this sequel. Um, yeah, we got, you know, a lot of returning cast, some new cast members as well. Um, but yeah, what were your thoughts on it, Akra? Yeah, uh, right from the get go, leaving the theater, I had like this biased rating where i gave it i texted you i said i gave it an 11 out of 10. i think visually it's a masterpiece and now i look back into it and i think i do recognize the issues that it had but for the most part i think it's a solid sequel to an already iconic film and so yeah um but what else thoughts do you have on it um uh, i think it expands more on the first one definitely um it definitely adds to this world building aspect and in certain parts of like pandora and this kind of universe that we've seen um i thought the runtime just felt a little too long for me i feel like certain parts and certain scenes they could have shortened a little bit but it didn't take away too much for me um i do love the new uh, creature designs and like the new technology that the humans have i thought that was great um it's so much it just adds so much to the lore of avatar um and yeah just the the actors i thought were phenomenal of course you know sam worthington um brings his a game to this even though he's he doesn't have too much of a role in this movie um he definitely feels like a like a new and improved kind of jake he's more mature now because he kind of has to uh fill in this like father role um for this movie uh and yeah so like right from the start uh we see that jake and itiri kind of like build this family and this that's kind of like the theme of this movie is his family uh cue uh the fast and furious uh <laughs> theme song but yeah yeah nateri and jake man they got busy after avatar one Woo! Ooh, the motherfucker uh, was like damn. nick cannon <laughs> like eight kids shit get him kill him <laughs> shit um but yeah and it was actually interesting because the first child he has wasn't even his own it was actually um dr augustine's uh sigourney weaver's character uh her child um, which they touch on a little bit we'll we'll get into that um because there's some you know un unanswered questions um but yeah then he has like two sons and i think he has um a daughter as well uh so this this movie kind of like touches on like of course family and of course like survival adaption so many great themes um but yeah uh, what were your thoughts on on like some of the family aspects yeah i think and i i i love the fact that this movie delves into the family foundation i don't think a lot of pictures really do that and especially in tv they kind of stray away from that it's almost ostracized and i love that we're bringing it back and i think it's important because the ending was very significant and why the family foundation is very important especially raising kids the right way right and i think it was just beautiful and again this movie is called the way of water i think that has something to do with it as well um it's a very universal type of quote i'd say um and i think natiri in this one i think she was really noticeable notable for me at least because she was really fierce in this movie like the first movie she was like okay this movie she was really fierce right once she has her cubs she'll do anything for him and it was really scary um and we also got uh, and guys now we're going to kind of get into spoiler territory so if you haven't watched the movie you know watch it and then come back to this but uh Cortridge plays a big role and from the trailers i didn't expect that he plays a huge role especially that Cortridge has a son um and it's his nickname is spider and he's like a human right left behind and i love how spider adopted this type of tradition from the navi and he kind of seems like he wants to be a part of their tribe and i think that was really beautiful i just wish that the writing kind of paid him more respect i felt like we could have had more scenes where uh they kind of like discussed a little bit about it, like the family ideology especially courtridge um this is the avatar the navi version of courtridge i wish i saw more of that dynamic but from what we got i think it was pretty sweet um, so what are your thoughts? Yeah, Jack Champion was was awesome as Spider. I really 
felt like he really researched this role and really like delved in like because this, this whole movie this whole franchise is is talking about like stepping in somebody else's shoes right and learning from somebody else's experience and Cortridge too we see in this movie kind of like adopts that ideology as well because now he's not the Cortridge you know he's not the human Cortridge he's the the uh, Navi uh, Cortridge right um, so he kind of like goes through the same journey that that Jake goes through right because now he has to figure out how to uh adapt as a navi right um but yeah i I like their relationship um and we'll talk about uh, a little bit like what happens towards the end but yeah uh, it was it was cool to see like courtrich is a little bit uh like vulnerable right because now he has somebody that he actually cared for i thought it was a little weird that they kind of just threw that in there that he had a son yeah all of a sudden it feels like like certain characters like him and and um dr augustine like the the fact that they just had kids randomly uh just felt like a little rush or like a weird plot device but I think it worked well for for this movie, and I think they're going to explore it more in the in the sequels probably. Um, but yeah, so this Cortridge uh, we see, so the the way that he, he survives, uh, they uh, I thought was a little strange how they did it. Um, so apparently the RDA had this technology where they could copy like somebody's like um, memories and like their their consciousness and then upload it to an avatar. Uh, which I thought was weird because it's like, why didn't they just do that in the first movie instead of having like Jake in the pods and all that stuff? But I mean, I could overlook that. Um, but what I, I it was I thought was weirder was like the fact that you know Cortridge was willing to sign up for this kind of like program because I feel like he was like the type of guy that was like so assured that you know they would win the first you know battle that he would need like a contingency plan. Um, so it felt a little bit out of character for him, but I, I think it was interesting, like seeing him adapt as a Navi and, and trying to learn, uh, like the hard way. Right. Cause it's kind of like humbling him now. Well, oh, I, yeah. what are your thoughts? I think, yeah, you're, you're spot on with that. I think it was forced upon him because he's under RDA rule, right? So he has to work with them. And the fact that now he, his clone, I guess his avatar clone, um, it's just that it's an avatar navi clone and they're fighting navi so i think eventually i i hope he's not this formulaic villain later on he did survive at the end and we'll go more into detail a little bit later on but i think that we could probably see him on a journey of new self-discovery and maybe he'll kind of like be a turncoat it'll be really wild to see that but he does have a son in the mix too so i think that's something to dangle on um, and especially like you guys are forcing me to fight these people. What happens to me after? Uh, let's say that I do win. Do I just live here for the rest of my life in, in, a, in a bunker on cots and stuff? I'm not living a lavish lifestyle. I can't go back home. You know, so I think he's going to realize right. that. that it's a means to an end kind of, I think, his character right now. So we'll see him in a self-discovery mode a little bit later on. Um, yeah, Courtridge was notable. Spider was notable. Um, I want to touch more on Kiri. Um, I have some theories. So Kiri is Sigourney Weaver again, just her clone avatar. Um, she was a cool character. I took her as an introduction to magical elements and this type of RPG that we're seeing because there's so many types of factions and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Did, did what's his name? Um, did that scientist guy bang Sigourney Weaver on the low <laughs> I don't know Ooh. there's some theories they actually addressed that there was like some theories it's really Better weird Marian <laughs> yeah yeah but what did you think of Kiri because I think she was so significant in this too and I appreciated that you know these types of movies like um they always talk about like uh the power of like the environment versus like machinery or industrialism you can look at other movies that are similar like um Princess Mononoke um so Kiri kind of like embodies like um, kind of like I think it was like the shaman lady in the first one. It was like Natiri's mother. She has like this connection with Ewa, which is like their god or like their spiritual div- divinity, right? Um, so she kind of like brings this spiritual empowerment um, to this movie and it's a lot more prevalent, right? Because actually now we get to see like what uh, the connection looks like when they actually... Uh, do Sahela, which is the connection to the larger Pandora network. So when she actually um, connects with that that coral thing, which was kind of like the the tree of souls in the first one, we actually see that she's actually like interacting with her mother. That actually, you know, Sigourney Weaver's character, she was in the first one. After she died, she became part of Awa. So it's cool, like, to see that it's kind of like um, if you think about like Black Panther in a way, like when T'Challa like interacts with the ancestors. 
Um, so it was cool. I, I like that. And I like that um, she has like a strong connection with so many of the, the creatures and you know, the wildlife of Pandora, which I thought were beautifully like designed, by the way. I think, um, you know, the wildlife in, in Avatar franchise always comes off as really natural looking. Like even some of the newer uh, Navi that we see, like the Metsai Kaina, I think they were really like well designed. And they feel like even though they're they're similar, they're so different. Um, we were talking earlier, like just how like they have like different uh tribal traditions right so they're not like the forest navi that we see in the first movie they have like their own culture and their own way of life which is the way of the water obviously um and their design they have uh like more um <clears throat> aquatic features right like their tails are like more like paddles not like um and like mammal tails like the not the forest navi have so they have different adaptions and they're trying to uh bring those kind of like adaptions to jake's family because jake in this movie uh he's trying to escape from the rda um because he's concerned for his family and that's what brings him to this more um aquatic village right uh so do you think like jake kind of went through his own journey like in this movie or like how do you think he adapted well how do you think uh his, his character journey will progress well now that's a good question because i wonder how his journey would be if if he was by himself, right? He wasn't in a relationship. He he didn't mm -hmm. have kids. I think that affected him a lot too. You know, he has something to worry about. It's not just himself. Um, so I think that played in a pivotal role. Um, and I think he, yeah, I think a great leader knows how to adapt and how to learn still. Like you're never done learning, especially if like an old man, a wise man will keep learning, right? There's still plenty of things to learn. Mm -hmm. And I... I think that's what it's about. I think the whole thing is like this embodiment of learning and caring for one another. Um, and, you know, caring. It, it takes a village to raise a child, you know, as they say. And and I love seeing that here. I think it was beautifully done. And let me just add too, um, the Metikeina here, that threw me for a loop because I can't wait for them to explore different biomes because if they look like that, imagine what like a snowy tundra tribe looks like or sand uh, tribe looks like um it's wild like uh, you know there's so much you could explore with and i can't wait for there to be an actual rpg video game that maybe could touch on that right um yeah what did you think of some of the members of the metacane we had ronal uh, which is kate winslet's character um and we also have uh tunawari which i think he was pretty sweet he was like a, a very mm -hmm. generous uh i'll say man but i mean navi <laughs> so what did you think of yeah them? like i like that they adopted like from a lot of like um I would say like Polynesian or yeah. like uh, island kind of like cultures too, because with their tattoos, right, you can kind of see that and their symbology and the, the way that, you know, even the like the design of like their village is like kind of like, <laughs> I was laughing earlier because I was saying it was like, it looked like sandals, like beach yeah. resort or some shit. <laughs> but it was cool. I liked it. I like how they designed it and um, they have such a strong connection with water, right? Um, even though they still live on land, they, they kind of adapt. I don't know if they had gills. I I don't know if they had like mm. if they could breathe underwater. They could breathe for a long time, um, like but they breath, they yeah. kind of yeah they adapted so that they could breathe a long time. And I like the, like that they're trying to train, you know, Jake's family because um, even though they're not like built for the water, they can still kind of like learn their techniques right and still kind of like adopt this this way of living right. So I thought it was cool. Like this whole movie, you know, they're everybody's learning right. This is that's the theme is like everybody's trying a new way of life. Um, and I thought that that just brings it home, right? Everybody's just trying to learn something new. Um, well, with that, the way of life, there was a lot of death in this movie. Um, and I think what was most prominent was a whale. And one of Jake's sons uh, grew this bond with this whale. Apparently, the whales on this planet are very intelligent. And there's another thing that the RDA is trying to get. Instead of unobtainium, there's also this fluid that uh, prolongs life makes humans immortal and so now they're farming for whales uh what did you think of those scenes where like all the whales were being killed and stuff that was so beautiful that felt like like life of pi or some shit uh, you mean <laughs> you like, mean like the whales not the whales being killed yeah, right <laughs> right yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh no but that that was awesome um yeah. like uh jake's uh son yeah like you said has this connection with this like whale like creature and i thought it was like so symbolic because like whales are kind of like mammals too so like because like jake's sons weren't being accepted by this very like almost like fish-like race so like 
you know, the fact that he made a friend with like a whale, it makes so much sense because whales have to come up for water too. So I thought that was like really symbolic. Um, yeah. And, and this particular whale too is like kind of an outcast as well. Right. Um, that was like kind of like his story was like they like the Metzakaina like outcasted him um, because uh, I forgot his name, the whale's name, but uh, his family um, died under the RDA and everybody thought that was his fault. So it's cool that like, you know, they kind of like have a relationship where like they're both kind of like outcasts, right? From from these tribes too. Yeah, and and just like yeah, like some people will probably have to stomach <laughs> certain scenes cuz there is like very graphic scenes cuz it, it touches on a, like a lot of like the whaling industry and like overfishing too. Um that's what the Avatar movies always touch on is like larger themes, right? Uh so there are like scenes where like the RDA is like 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 hunting these whales down and it's kind of like hard to watch sometimes but so just be warned if you haven't watched it yet but um yeah and then eventually like towards the end which we'll probably touch on um the the whales actually like help out in the final battle which i thought was really cool so what were your thoughts on like you know just like the final battle and how everything kind of like resolved yeah it was wild um it to be honest with you it wasn't as huge i'd say as the first final battle in the first movie it was very like I don't know, it was very small scale, kind of. They were dealing with this big-ass boat that kind of resembled like a manta ray, which I thought was funny. and Or not boat, it was like a ship. And I don't know, the, like, the later half of the fight, first and foremost, that was a cool fight because there was there was suspense, right? And then there was full-blown action and all that. But the later half of the fight, all of, like, the tribe from the water people, they just dipped, they smoked. Yeah, hey, where the fuck did they go? They smoked a cigarette, <laughs> they drank a coffee, they were waiting for, like, <laughs> I don't Shit, know. They must have like checked out of sandals or some shit. That's how you know that they're <laughs> like, extras that they couldn't afford <laughs> yeah. to keep them on anymore. Because it was like, <laughs> like, why did you guys leave? You know? It was so weird. It was like they just like showed up. Yeah, it was it was cool in the beginning because like there was like this tension because like Cortridge like you know was holding the kids hostage and then like um you know Jake was gonna like make the sacrifice play and like give himself up because like he felt responsible. You know that he's bringing this war onto the Metzakeina. Um, and, but then when they actually get to the battle, it was actually like really dope. Like they're actually like whooping ass. I don't know what the fuck the RDA's like, uh, uh windshields are made of in their helicopters, yeah. but <laughs> apparently like spears and arrows can just blow through that shit easy. Damn. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, it was really cool. Like watching that whole battle unfold. Um, but yeah, and then, then they just kind of like dipped and we didn't see them for the rest of the, the movie. And it was just kind of like Jake and Atari, like they were like, um, like sinking in the ship and you can definitely tell like james cameron <laughs> uh referenced like titanic in this movie too just yeah. like the way like uh certain shots you could like tell you it felt like claustrophobic like you're actually like in the ship like sinking with it and this whole movie i thought it was cool too because like they filmed it like underwater yeah um and like a tank too so yeah yeah um he handles yeah. underwater scenes so good too i mean he has the the, the experience in the past um mm -hmm. also what happened here so jake's one of his son sons die um and i felt like the way how they approached that ending was weird because jake and courtridge end up fighting each other and um natiri basically holds before that natiri holds spider uh hostage and courtridge is holding like a daughter or something hostage and natiri like slices the son's abdomen his his throat i think over it no, not his throat. It was, it was like his his chest. She just slices it like to say, "I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna kill him. Let my daughter go." And mm -hmm. Korchich, which was cool, because Korchich said, "I don't care, or whatever." I thought he was like this cold ass guy. He says, "No," and he lets the daughter go. So that's when uh, Jake and Korchich start fighting. But at the end, um, they were on this little island, and they were like, you know, just I don't know, whatever, talking shit or something. And his son comes back. Because the son saves Courtridge later on because Courtridge is drowning. So the son saves him, which is cool. You could save that for the future movies, right? Like that you have two families now. Uh, mm -hmm. But there was no side eyeing by Neytiri and the son. There was no like discussion. It they was kind of brushed it off. It was weird. Yeah. yeah. Like like that whole end part, I felt like they had troubles in the editing room or something like that for some reason. I don't know. This movie is really expensive. So maybe they had to cut some stuff down. I don't know. It was weird though. Well, Terry also kind of had a moment of anger too because he just lost her son. So I can kind of understand. I can understand her. Um, yeah. But also, kind of like Spider was kind of like part of this family already. So yeah. I mean, she kind of already felt weird about Spider because he was human. Yeah. Um, and the fact that he's Courtridge's son as well. So I, I, I kind of see where Terry was coming from. But like, yeah, like she didn't even like apologize later. 
at least that I remember. <laughs> like she didn't even say like, oh, you're like you're part of this family now. Mm-hmm. But I thought that was yeah, that was a little strange that they did that too. And then kind of like we didn't get anything else with like, um, you know, who the identity of like Kiri's father was, which I'm sure they'll probably touch on on yeah, the other movies. Way. But it was just kind of strange that they left that on a cliffhanger, right? Um, but yeah, any any final thoughts on the movie and and how would you rate it? This movie, to be honest with you, I think they reserved a lot of stuff for the sequels. I think that's the problem with like building a franchise. You sometimes reserve things for the sequels, so you can't fully flesh out ideas. You have to wait to the next movie, so you have to wait years sometimes. But I think for the most part, this movie was huge. That's what we expected. Uh, we got to see a new biome, which is amazing. It's beautiful, of course. I think they handled the CGI for water masterfully. I think they outdid Aquaman, even. Um, and I think... I think they're on the right track. Um, I, I think that they mean well. I think through like sentimental values and stuff, I think it's beautiful. I like that. It's like it kind of feels almost like this classic movie. It's it's weird, right? It doesn't feel like movies today. And of course, every Avatar movie is is an event, I consider them, rather than like an actual movie. Um, and I think, you know, credit to James Cameron, he could usually pull that off. Um, so I really, I really enjoyed this movie out of one to ten now. That we're doing this review, I'd probably give it an eight out of ten. Um, I I personally enjoyed this movie, I think, a lot more than the first Avatar movie. Um, so that's how I feel about it. But how do you feel? What's your final thoughts? Yeah, these definitely feel like big big budget movies. They're definitely like like epics in their own right. And um, it's weird because like they're sci fi movies, but they're also like very like spiritual movies as well. Yeah. Um, personally, I think I prefer the first Avatar movie more just because I felt like um. The pacing was better like this like even like there's certain movies like the run times like even though they're go on for long the pacing is nice but i feel like certain scenes in this movie kind of like dragged on a little bit too much uh i just felt like there was like a bit too many kids as well so it's kind of like hard to follow them sometimes because like they were all over the place and then like sometimes they already would like capture one kid and they'd free one kid and another person got captured it was kind of like hard to follow sometimes um, but those are my main criticism. I think everything else was just uh, beautifully done. I love the symbology. I love, the, you know, the, of course, like the connection to the environment and like you know, bigger th- things. I love the conflicts with certain characters, like Quartz, obviously. But then there's like some people in the RDA, like that uh, marine biologist guy. Like you can tell, like they they don't always like believe in this kind of like thing that they're doing, right? That you know they actually want to help the Navi and not uh, oppress them. Um, yeah, and there's like a lot of like poetic things as well. Just like <laughs> the whale uh, cutting off the guy's arm. I thought that was like poetic justice because he lost his his fin, right? Um, so yeah, everything was beautiful. And you know, like you said, like the cinematography was beautiful. Like the underwater scenes, I agree. Definitely like were on par. Like, oh, I'd say almost better than like Wakanda Forever is like water scenes as well. Um, and I, I can't wait to see what, what the, the next two sequels bring. But yeah, if I had to rate it, I'd probably give it, um, I, I think I would give it 8 out of 10 as well perfectly said yeah everybody that is our review for avatar way of the water if you made it to the end again as we always say we love you and we see you thank you so much and if you're so inclined to check out our other playlists as well again we haven't been back for a while we've been discussing a lot of things for our next season we're going to do an update video after recording this that will be our new year's reflection and guys stay with us because we have so much epic stuff planned so as always i love you dylan please take us away yeah guys thank you so much i want to say thank you to everybody that have been helping our channel grow this past year of course we're going to touch on it in our new year's reflection episode but i just want to thank each and every one of you every day for supporting our channel we can't do this without you guys of course um and yeah like akram said we have so many great things planned for season five so if you haven't already followed us please do please sub the channel um anything helps the channel like sub anything share uh, of course, you can watch us on YouTube, but we're also on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Anchor as well if you want to listen to us on MP3. Um, and yeah, you can also check us out on social platforms like TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram as well. So thank you guys again. Until then, thanks for having lunch with us. See you guys.